So here's a story for you. I work in a field with a 95% rejection rate. That's to say, I'm a writer. I could, oh, I need my clicker. <laughs> yeah. Should I start over again? <laughs> okay. Here's a story for you. I work in a field with a 95% rejection rate. That's to say, I'm a writer. I could pretty much build a Millennium Falcon with my rejection slips. <laughs> so here's another way to tell that story. I'm a writer, I get published a lot, and people read my words. Telling the victorious story is the secret to uncommon success. Once I told the story of the daughter of a man who lost a fortune and nearly lost all of his dreams. Once I told the story of the daughter of a man who sat her down with a typewriter and a collection of Hemingway short stories and told her that she could write one true sentence. How you tell your story creates the path. In other words, change your story, change your life. Now my true path is as a writer. That's my calling and you have one too. Have you heard the call? Yes, I know you have. To be a creative soul in a culture that does not value women or art is to be nothing short of superhero. Donny Shapiro in Still Writing tells about a sculptor friend whose work is in some of the most prominent collections in the country. Somebody just asked me if I was still doing that sculpture thing. He wondered aloud if he should respond with, so are you still doing that brain surgery thing? <laughs> to write, to be a creative, to be one who tunes into an inner landscape is to receive the call. The call to leave the ordinary world like the hero in the mythic journey. Women must take a cue from Joseph Campbell and see themselves as the heroes of their own lives. Now, often when we tell the story of the hero's journey, we tell it from Luke Skywalker's point of view. I'm the mother of twins. I couldn't help but notice Luke had a twin sister, Princess Leia. So would she tell her story this way? My mother died giving birth to me. I'm a motherless child. My twin brother was taken away to another planet and I am alone in this world. My father turned evil. There's no saving him. Or would she tell her story this way? I served in the Imperial Senate and I have led a revolution. As my mother lay dying, I heard her cries of childbirth, her great love for my father. And I always remember this, even when I feel the pull to his dark side. So yes, I have been angry with my father. Like, there was that time he froze my husband. <laughs> and yes, I have resisted the call. Like there was that time that I had to go rescue my husband when he was being held hostage by Jabba the Hutt. And I ended up in that chain get up. <laughs> I mean, you could hold on to that for a long time. I see now the purpose. From these events, my family was healed. I grew stronger, and I made a good marriage with Han Solo, who you have to admit was pretty hot. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> what I want for you is to see yourself on that path, to find that one true sentence that speaks for who you are and where you must go. How can we do this? How can we begin? Allies, mentors, and tormentors. Your greatest ally is your knowledge that this is your sacred calling. That right there, you should say, that is a sacred yes. Say no to what does not support and what does not fit. Make your yes your best friend. Mentors, take the dependency leap Recognize that you are not self-sufficient. Embrace the joyful struggle of interdependence. 
as I did when I found myself at the post office on Halloween with my manuscript sliding through the slot into the bin, alone and directionless and without the postage sticker. I mean, who does that? <laughs> so, and a woman in a superwoman cape came to my aid, pretty much shut down the whole post office because I had been kind to her. But we know this part of the story, don't we? We know allies and mentors. We know friendship and collaboration. It must be something else then. This hero thing, it's not easy or natural. I believe that we have thousands of years of patriarchy still kind of rattling around in our heads, ever so ready to remind us when we set out on the path that we are to be the object of someone else's life and not the subject of our own. So it's a habit well practiced. We opt out and we don't even know we opted out. We refuse the call or we accept the call to ordinary success, the call that comes in disguise. To take the courageous path is to take the risk of bringing on the battle. I ask you then, if you went, if you just set out on the path, who would disapprove? Who or what would stand in your way? How huge this risk is for us. For centuries, women have depended on pleasing the men in their lives for their very survival. Displease someone in power, and it was slave or prostitute. Too often, then, we reject ourselves when what we say meets a challenge, or when we take the risk to say what we truly want. We think the adversity is a no, when in fact, it's a big yes, get ready. The dark nights of the soul are what make you worthy of your yes. The allies and the mentors who show up for you, they are a yes too. It is in the ordeals that we taste the elixir, the sweet wisdom the hero brings back from her journey. And that's the part of the story that we must share with each other. Which brings me to the tormentors. Your tormentors are your mentors too. You will find them in your critics and in the circumstances from which you must rise. They are the bullies, the scolders, the nitpickers, the poverty, the dad, the evil parents, the rejection slips, the glass ceiling, the spouse who's not on board with the plan. <laughs> These are not your dragons. These are your greatest sages. I've been thinking about that woman in the superwoman cape. I've been thinking about what it means then to learn to fly to learn to fly is to achieve a certain velocity. A certain velocity. Give me faith then and give me speed. Test my character, strengthen my resolve. I'll show you what I'm made of. I ask my fear, how can I defeat you? Or better yet, how can I write about you? Not to slay you, but to understand you. The page is my threshold where I leave the ordinary world, where fear is real and criticism means anything. I enter an extraordinary world. And for 20 years, I traveled back and forth between those two worlds as I wrote that story about the daughter of the man with broken dreams. For seven of those 20 years, that story stayed in a drawer. I couldn't face it, but here it is. And that story is better for the joyful struggle of writing it. 
The page is my threshold where I know my story begins, and that's the story I choose to tell. Tell better stories, live a better life. I'm a writer, and that's the truest sentence I know. <laughs>